This video is my first ever eGPU video. One of the most requested topics I've had since I started making tech videos about one and a half year ago. I finally decided to get an external GPU, a used one with only a GTX 1070 in it, but still I find that this will be more than enough to try out the Thunderbolt 3 and 4 capabilities to be able to run thin and light laptops together with external powerful GPUs. So in this video we will check out using this external GPU together with my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i, how it works to plug it in and install it, how it runs together with a few games compared to when you just run on the internal XE graphics, some benchmarks before and after plugging it into the eGPU, as well as some video editing to see if it makes a difference in that front. And then in the very end, just for the sake of it, we will try plugging the eGPU into the AMD version of the laptop to see what happens. I'm pretty sure nothing will happen, but let's just try it out and see how it works. If you have any questions about running eGPUs on these machines, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm usually very fast to reply and it's really nice to have a conversation down there with you guys. You can also reach me at Instagram where I'm at W2Best. The eGPU I decided to get was a used Gigabyte Eorus gaming box with a GTX 1070 in it. The reason I wanted to get this guy is that it's pretty small and pretty lightweight and also the price of this guy with 1070 was really not that bad. I paid around 300 euros for it and when it was sold new back in the day, about three years ago, it was at around 650 euros. This guy has a power in, four USB A ports, two DVI out for monitor, one HDMI out for monitor, one display port out for monitor, and then the Thunderbolt 3 port for connecting to your laptop. I would put this guy about that position on my table. And because it takes up so little space on the table, I'm actually able to have it there pretty much all the time and be ready for having a more powerful setup whenever I want to plug in my laptop. Installing an eGPU is pretty much as simple as it gets. You plug in the power cable into the back. You then plug in your Thunderbolt cable into the back. Bring out your Thunderbolt equipped laptop and plug the Thunderbolt cable into the Thunderbolt port. You then hear the laptop starting to set up together with the eGPU. Now the laptop is receiving power through the Thunderbolt cable together with having the 1070 NVIDIA GPU running to be able to game or video edit with much more power. That's the setup process, it's not more than that. There is a little bit of fan noise coming from the eGPU, but it's not that bad and it spins up when you're gaming, but since I then use the audio from the laptop, and that is outpowering of course the audio from the fans of the eGPU, so I've never really seen it as a problem. Now when we get into an Overwatch game here, we can see what options the game select for us with this setup with the eGPU. And now I'm running my screen recorder plugged into HDMI so that I will be able to show you the gameplay and the FPS count a bit more good looking than if I would be filming the screen only. When we look here, we get selected the options Ultra together with a render scale of 141% and pretty much ultra settings all across the board. That is a pretty big difference compared to what you get when you run the internal XD graphics. But now let's play and see what frame rates we get when we are at this ultra settings 141% render scale. As you can see right now when getting into the spawn room here, we are around 110 to 120 FPS. And this is in ultra settings with 141% render scale. So this is pretty amazing for a thin and light machine like the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i. 
But let's try some more intense gameplay and see how it fares. Now, after a little bit of gameplay, we are dropping down to below 100 FPS, but so far we have stayed above the 100 FPS mark all of the time in this game. I'm now only plugged into power and running in extreme performance mode, but now we're gonna check what options we get when not running the eGPU. In this case, the game selects low graphics settings and a render scale of 83%, together with an all low settings across the board. As you can see in the gameplay here, we are around 40 to 50 FPS in Overwatch low settings, 83% render scale. When with the 1070 and the eGPU, we were at 120 FPS in ultra settings, 141% render scale. So it's a pretty insane difference playing on XD graphics compared to with the eGPU. And I mean, of course, this is not a surprise. But what I really enjoy about it is the fact that I will be able to have the eGPU sitting at home. So this is the kind of performance I can get when bringing the Yoga Slim 7i out on a trip. But when I'm at home, I will be able to play with those super solid performances that can pretty much run any game that I'm interested in running. I would still say that for mobile gaming, this is quite okay. Like, I'm fine playing on uh, 40 to 50 FPS if I'm just playing quick play casual games. But it's not enough for heavier games or competitive gameplay. And it's really not enough for plugging into an external monitor and getting a better frame rate like 144 Hz monitors could push out. So, for like more advanced gaming applications, I would really not play with XE graphics and therefore it's so good to have the Thunderbolt 4 to be able to run this eGPU setup. Let's try out a bit of The Witcher 3 gameplay and do it side by side with the XE graphics to see how it stacks up to the internals. So we will set the settings to Ultra. And then we will have VSync set to on. I know some people don't like it, but in this case we still have a maximum FPS of 60. So it won't matter that much to have VSync on. Then we will have NVIDIA Hairworks on, NVIDIA Hairworks AA on 4. And then we have high or ultra settings across the board here. This is compared to the XE graphics where we will have low settings all across the board. When running the intro of The Witcher 3, we have the low settings on the XE graphics and we have the ultra settings on the eGP. And as you can see here, we have about 20 to sometimes 25 FPS on the XE graphics and we usually run around 50 FPS on the eGPU. So that makes it an incredibly playable experience with the eGPU and somewhat playable on the XE graphics, but you can also see the actual difference in graphics, the amount of details that's present with Ultra no, compared to low. It is really a much, much nicer experience.
as you can see, the difference between the two benchmarks is quite significant. With the XE graphics we get an average FPS of 28.9 and a score of 728. And with the eGPU we get an average FPS of 101.7 and a score of 2561. I was trying to do a render test in DaVinci Resolve, rendering my Matebook 14 unboxing video that is a Full HD video with a few video layers together with some color grading. With the 1070 I rendered in 13 minutes and 24 seconds and with the built-in XE graphics I rendered in 13 minutes and 10 seconds. So I'm not sure if the program is actually utilizing the 1070 graphics. I will experiment a bit more with this for my sometime in the future video editing video on Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 and 7i. Last but not least, I wanted to try out what happens if you take the AMD version of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 and plug this in to the Aorus Gaming Box 1070. The AMD version doesn't come with a Thunderbolt port, so it's not gonna work with the eGPU, but it's still interesting to see what is happening. Maybe it recognizes some kind of device, maybe it's just charging the laptop, or something else will happen. We plug it in and it says Thunderbolt device functionality might be limited. Make sure the Thunderbolt device you're connecting to is supported by your PC. Select this message for more troubleshooting info. We can see that the laptop is being charged by the eGPU. But except that nothing else seems to be happening. And now it stopped charging and then showed up the same message again. Yeah, so it seems to be restarting to try to make it work, but of course it won't work because there's no Thunderbolt. Okay, that was pretty interesting to try regardless. That is it for my first eGPU video on this channel. I am super stoked to finally have this in the house because that means with every new laptop I review, I will be able to include compatibility with eGPUs and running a much, much more powerful setup at home. I'm also happy that whenever I will be in a bigger apartment where I can have an actual big 144Hz monitor, I will be able to have a proper gaming setup together with this eGPU and a thin and light laptop plugged into it. If you've been watching until the very end and like this video, I would be super happy if you wanted to put a like on the video and maybe also subscribe to this channel. That gives me a ton of motivation to bring out new content moving forward. I'm W2Best, I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials, and I will see you in the comment section and in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.